Hello maths fans! Today I'm very excited to be joined by a special guest. This is Dennis who has his own YouTube channel. Dennis, would you like to introduce yourself for our audience? Yes, thanks Dr. Tom. So my name is Dennis and uh, I run a YouTube channel, The Physics Math Wizard, where I do interesting problems in mathematics and physics. And uh, I'm happy to be on Dr. Tom's channel today. And I believe not only are you joining us today as a special guest, I believe you've promised me a pretty difficult maths question. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I do. I do have a question. And uh, I actually uh, came across this question from uh, uh, I, I usually look through math Olympiad problems because they're you know, always interesting. So I found this specific one from a Vietnamese math Olympiad. And I thought it would be a, a nice one to, to have you try it out. <laughs> Olympiads are difficult, so I'm a, I'm a little scared. Olympiad is a terrifying word, but I'm, I'm ready to give it a go. So what have you got? So it's 0 0.9. So 0 0.9 T equals, so we have the floor of T divided by T minus the floor of T. And uh, so that's the equation. I'll, I'll read out the question. So it goes, uh, you have to find all positive values of t that satisfy this equation here. Okay, so I think I've written this out correct. So we're trying to find all t greater than zero, satisfying 0 0.9 times t is equal to the floor of t divided by t minus the floor of t. Yeah, sure, that's it. Okay, and am I correct in thinking that the floor function here means the largest integer less than t. Okay. Right. Uh, all right, okay, tough one. So I'm solving this for, for all possible t. Okay, so as, as with most uh, expressions where you have a function on the denominator, my first instinct here is to make sure that the denominator isn't zero. Okay, yeah. Because of course, if, if this is going to be zero, then we can't really solve it. So, you know, it's, so I'm thinking this can't be zero. So if I say, so if we start by saying t cannot be equal to the floor of t, then what does that mean? If t cannot be the floor, I think that's going to mean t cannot be an integer itself. Yeah, that's true. Right, because I'm thinking, because if, you know, if we take, say, t was 2, for example, or any other integer, then its floor function would be equal to t itself, and then that's going to mess up and completely ruin, ruin our equation. That's right. Okay, so, so t can't be an integer, right, then what can we say? We can say... Let's suppose, so let's say that t needs to be, so it can't be an integer, so let's suppose it's between n and m plus 1. So this is going to be an open bracket, so like an open set, open interval. So t is not an integer where n is an integer. I should probably write that, right? So n, I guess, is a natural number. Uh, natural number. So I'm thinking if t is between those two values, then we should be okay, because then this won't be zero. Of course, we need to figure out what n are possible, and I guess that's maybe going to give us the solutions. Um, so if I suppose this, then the floor of t will just be n. So if t is in this interval, the floor of t, therefore the floor of t has to be equal to n for any value of t between n and n plus 1, where it can't quite go up to n plus 1, the floor must be that. So I'm thinking if we sub this in now, so 0.9 times t. So when I say sub in, I'm just going to substitute in for the floor function and remember this. So I'm thinking this I'm going to put in a box because I think that's going to be important. So we can say 0 0.9 of t is equal to the floor of t, which will be n divided by t minus n. And now I'm hoping this is just going to be a quadratic equation, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, right? So I'm thinking if we, if we simplify this and multiply up, so what we're going to get, let's rewrite that as a fraction, 9 tenths of t squared 
minus 9 tenths of um, nt minus n has to be 0. Um, so let's simplify that a little bit. Let's multiply through by 10 ninths. So t squared minus n times t um, minus 10 over 9 times n equals 0. So I think what I want to do is try and solve this now as a quadratic equation, as a function of t, and then get my solution in terms of n. Well, that's a pretty nice strategy. <laughs> yeah, is, is this are you, is this to sound sensible to you so far? <laughs> Please stop me if I do something very silly. <laughs> yeah, it, it really um, makes sense. I see, especially the, the, the way you just started, uh, you know, by putting out the conditions that will make this uh, valid. Yeah, ex right. That's that's the key thing, I think. I, I don't, I'm, I'm sure that is probably the bit that's going to trick a lot of students trying to do this question. So we've got a quadratic. We can now just use the quadratic formula. Um, so there's going to be a plus and a minus root. Let's call these t plus and minus. So we're going to get minus b, so that's n divided by 2a, plus or minus 1 over 2a. And then we need b squared, which is going to be n squared, minus 4 times that becomes a plus, And that's going to be 40n over 9. Now, I like to take my uh, fractions outside of the square root. I think it's a bit easier, so I'm going to slightly simplify that to get n over 2 plus or minus. If I take out a 3, then I multiply inside by a 9, which is what I want. So I'll get 9n squared plus 40n inside the square root. So I think these are my two roots to the quadratic equation, which was what we formed from the original equation with the floor function being given by n. So now I want to see how are these going to be valid? Okay. Um, so first of all, we have this, don't we? The t is positive. So I the minus root looks to me like it's going to be negative, I think. But let's just check. So if I check, um, if we consider uh, n equals 1, then I think t minus for that is going to be a half uh, minus 1 sixth times, it's going to be the square root of 49, so it's going to be 7. So half minus 7 is 6, so that's negative. And I think as n increases, this is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, yeah, it definitely is, because 40 over 6 is bigger than a half, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely going to get, so they're always going to be negative, I think, because n can only get bigger from there. So this is, right, so t minus is always negative. So I'm actually only interested in t plus. So we can say that the roots are going to be just the plus ones, which will be n over 2 plus 1 sixth times the square root of 9n squared plus 40. And I think at this point, if I put a box around this, I think at this point, this is where I want to come back to this. Because yeah. this is definitely positive. So it's, that one's okay. Uh, but I've made this very strong assumption at the beginning about it being sandwiched between these integers. And this was key in getting that, which allowed me to get this. So I've got to make sure that this thing holds. So I think what I need here is I need this less than n. Um, so if I was sort of, I can say this is less than n, and it also needs to be, sorry, bigger than n and less than n plus 1. So I can kind of sandwich it, I think, this value for t. So let's look at the less than 1. So we can say for this to be bigger than n, that means I've got to have 1 sixth times the square root 9n squared plus 40n. This has got to be bigger than n over 2. Yep. Because I've already got half n, so if I'm adding another half, that has to be true. Uh, we can simplify that a little bit. Let's multiply by 6. So that's going to be 3. And then we're going to square that. So I'm going to get 9n squared plus 40n must be bigger than 9n squared. So 40n must be positive. That's true, because n is a positive integer. So tick, smiley face, 
I'm happy. <laughs> that one works. Yeah. I have a feeling the other one will not be quite so simple. Let's see. <laughs> um, so the second one, let's make a bit of space. Okay, so the second inequality, we need this to be less than n plus one. So what have I got? I've got n over two plus six times the square root of nine n squared plus 40n. Uh, and I want this whole thing to be less than n plus one. Right, well, let's subtract n over two from both sides. Again, that's positive, so that's okay. Uh, let's move to n over two. Let's multiply by that six. Um, so that then becomes six n plus six. So that's three n plus six. Um, and then I'm gonna square it. So I think we can say 9n squared plus 40n must be less than, so that's 3, yeah, thank you, 3n plus 6 squared. And if I expand that out, I'm going to get a 9n squared. This is good. I like this. This is what I wanted because that's going to cancel. And then plus 18 plus another 18 plus 36n plus 36, I think, is what I'm going to get from that. So, like I said, that's going to count. This is looking promising. So they cancel. Uh, so then I can subtract from both sides. So I need 4n less than 36. So I need n less than 9. Right. Oh, yeah. Now I'm getting somewhere. Now I'm getting somewhere, right? So I think, so I, I think that might be it. So we can say that. Yeah, you nearly have the solution. Yeah, so we need t to be between these two numbers, which will hold here provided n is between zero and nine. So in other words, I think our solutions are going the to be positive given, value of t. I think our solutions are gonna be given by this formula, but when, with this range of n. So this is true when n is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. So I think you take those values, substitute them into here, and I, I hope, I believe, that will give you eight possible solutions for t. Yeah, I see that. Wow, that's, a, that's an interesting one. <laughs> I like, I like you, the way you worked out the strategy. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, is, is this, do you know what the answer is? Is this, is this like, sort of close <laughs> yeah that's that's actually the solution uh that uh, I, I try to come up with true <laughs> <laughs> okay good i'm glad if we agree then i i to me it makes sense i mean i think the key thing you know I'll be, this to me was really important was kind of that starting point i would imagine a lot of students trying to do this question would get very stuck maybe they'd spot the denominator couldn't be zero but then realize it realizing what that actually means in terms of t is really important because this as we saw with all of my inequalities that ultimately gave you the possible values of n because otherwise you could get to this point and if you forgot about this you could say here are my solutions for any n and that could be an infinite number of solutions i think yeah this is limiting us and it's telling us that n has to be less than nine I'm glad that worked out. I knew this was going well when the 9n squared appeared. I was like, this feels like it's, you know, it's one of those, right? As mathematicians, I'm sure you're the same. When you're working out a problem and things just cancel really nicely, you're like, I might be doing this correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's always nice in math when things are cancelling up uh, nicely like that. Agreed. Awesome. Well, that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Dennis, for, for sharing the problem. I think that, that was great. I enjoyed that a lot. And I'm glad I got it correct. So again, thank you so much for, for sharing the problem. Uh, thank you for, for coming and saying hello to, to everyone on Tom Rock's Maths. It's, it's been a real pleasure. And we're going to record a second video, which is going to go out on your channel, solving some more problems as well. So for everyone watching, do check out Dennis's channel and do check out the video that we're going to record um, right after this, where we're going to be solving some more problems together. So again, huge thank you, Dennis. Uh, thanks as always to everybody for watching the video. Please do remember to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've been watching and I'll see you all soon. Great.